<sighs> Yesterday when we left off with the reading, mom was fussing on Ralph. Do you remember what for? She's like, Ralph, you have been gone too long. Where were you in the middle of the night? Is he going to tell his mom where he was? No. Mom would have a fit if she knew that he was off down somewhere um, riding a motorcycle of all things in the hallway in the middle of the night. And Ralph tells her basically, Mom, I'm growing up. We're on page 72, 73. And he basically says, you know, I am going to go downstairs sometimes. And she's like, Ralph, there could be cats. There could be poison that could kill you down there. Why would you do that? And she said, remember, we moved inside the hotel to be safe. Why was the outside not safe? Do you remember that? She said, Uncle Leroy disappeared, and where were his bones found? I think yesterday I said Uncle Ralph. I don't know why I said that, but it was Uncle Leroy. Do you remember? There was an owl outside, and when they took that owl pellet, which is the poop of the owl, when they took that pellet apart, they found Uncle Leroy's bones inside the owl pellet. So she's like, we moved inside to be safe. You're being a crazy teenage mouse thinking that it's going to be safe to be outside or to be downstairs, even outside where an owl could see you and get you. I mean, I get mom's point. I kind of don't want anything to happen to Ralph either. Let's look on page 73 and see what happens. Let's finish up the chapter. The mother mouse's plea was interrupted by the sound of Keith returning to room 215. Now we'll see, said Ralph to his mother and waited, anxious lest his friend let him down. Sure enough, Keith came to the knot hole. Do you remember why Keith is coming to the knot hole? What's he going to leave him? What kind of sandwich? Peanut butter and jelly. Psst, he whispered. Here it is. The waitress thought I was crazy ordering a peanut butter sandwich along with my cornflakes for breakfast, but here it is. He stuffed half a sandwich a bit at a time into the hole where Ralph seized the pieces and pulled them all the way through. Listen, we're going to be gone most of the day. The dining room is packing us a picnic lunch and we're going to drive along some of the back roads and visit some old mining towns. <gasps> Thanks a lot, Ralph managed to say, with his mouth watering. Have fun. See you tonight, said Keith. Have a good day's sleep. Ralph's mother could not help being impressed by the sight of that peanut butter sandwich. Just like room service, she marveled. You know what room service is? It's where they bring you um, the food when you're staying in a hotel. Why, it's a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and it even has butter in it. I told you he would bring it. Ralph could not help boasting, even though his mouth was full. Did Mom believe yesterday that uh, the boy, that Keith would bring the sandwich? No, she didn't. She said the boy could be dangerous. After sharing his feast with his squeaky little brothers and sisters, all of whom had trouble with peanut butter sticking to their teeth, Ralph curled up on a heap of shredded Kleenex and took a good long nap. When he awoke refreshed, his first thought was of the what? What's that word? <gasps> Motorcycle. He wondered if Keith had really remembered to leave it under the bed. He yawned and stretched and left by way of the knot hole. Room 215 was just as Ralph had last seen it. The bed had been made and there were no fresh towels on the wash basin. The bed had not been made. Ralph ducked under the sheets and blankets that had tumbled off on one side of the bed and there in the dim light he caught the gleam of chromium exhaust pipes. <gasps> Keith had trusted him after all. He walked across the carpet and he took hold of the hand grips once more, 
they felt just right in his paws, and he longed to be off speeding around the threadbare spots on the carpet, but a promise was a promise. Keith had kept his promise about the peanut butter sandwich. Ralph would keep his about not riding the motorcycle in the daytime. He tried to satisfy himself by walking around the motorcycle in the dim light under the bed, admiring all over again the sleek design of the machine. Ralph was lost in admiration and daydreams of speed and power. <gasps> when suddenly the door opened and the maid entered. Oh no, it was too late to make a dash for the mouse hole. The maid stripped the blankets and sheets from the bed shedding unwelcome light on Ralph and the motorcycle. Her feet and white sneakers moved lightly as she gathered up the sheets and pillowcases and towels and dropped them with a soft plop beside the open door. The next thing Ralph knows, he was hearing unfamiliar and dreaded footsteps coming down the hallway, steps he had learned to fear when he was a tiny mouse. <gasps> it was the head housekeeper. The woman who was in charge of all the maids in the hotel. He recognized her steps and he recognized her shoes. Stout, sensible black Oxfords. Nothing was even clean, ever clean enough for the head housekeeper and Ralph's whole family lived in dread lest she discover their mouse hole. Now he held his breath, hoping she would go down the hallway, but no. She stepped in to room 215. Good morning, Marjorie, the housekeeper spoke crisply to the maid. Be sure you clean 215 and 216 very thoroughly this morning. There's been a complaint from the guest. They suspect mice. <gasps> oh no, are the guests supposed to know that there are mice there? No. Yes, ma'am, said the maid. Look behind all the drawers, continued the housekeeper, and in the corners of the closets. Please report any evidence of mice and be sure you, uh-oh, read this. What is she supposed to do? And be sure you vacuum under the beds. You have been getting careless lately. With that, she walked briskly down the hall. Old grouch, muttered the maid as she reached into the hall for something that produced a sound that struck terror into Ralph's heart. It was the clang of the vacuum cleaner attachments banging together. Oh no, look, what's the, what's the title of the next chapter? <gasps> The vacuum cleaner. Why is Ralph afraid of the vacuum cleaner? Because it could suck him up, right, Linus? We talked about that, and that's kind of scary. Hang on. It's probably not going to happen, but we're going to have to read it to figure out. And we'll do our we'll do our comprehension questions tomorrow on this chapter. I sure do hope Ralph is going to be okay. But it's scary knowing that he's under that bed. And that the vacuum cleaner is coming. Oh, I hope he's going to be okay. Just kidding, he is. But we're going to have to read and see what happens, okay? We'll read again. We'll do our comprehension questions tomorrow. And then we'll read again on Thursday. Have a great day, friends. Thanks for listening.